Hello everybody, this is the MATLAB and Simulink Racing Lounge. In today's session we are going to talk about data acquisition and data analysis using MATLAB. The expert for today's session is Rainer Mümmler. Hello. Hello Rainer. Um, Rainer will show us an interesting demo how to use statistical approaches to smooth your data, to detect outliers and to kill them away. Um, furthermore, in that session we will talk about how you can get your data from hardware, so data acquisition from hardware. In that case, we will have a battery yep. and take the voltage out and then perform data analysis on that. We will touch the topic of sharing workflows, which means um, we want to set up an efficient workflow that you can share your data, cooperate in a team and have automated approaches so that you don't have to set up the workflow anytime you process data. You want to have a workflow that you can use for different for different te technical prob problems. And as said, we will also have a look at a more advanced approach, a statistical approach using the statistics toolbox um, for data processing. So to start, we have mentioned workflow sometimes, Rainer. What is a data analysis workflow? Yeah. This is kind of typical workflow we, we, we use when we um apply data, uh, MATLAB for data analysis. You, you have three steps. Um, that's typical for all yeah, kind of yeah, data analysis. Uh, first, this, the first step is g getting access to your data. This could mm -hmm. be done, yeah, you have files, for example, Offline your hard files, disk, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Or, or in this case, we use our hardware, which is directly connected to MATLAB, and then we mm -hmm. can acquire the data directly in the MATLAB workspace. And you see, uh, we use our uh, battery, Mm -hmm. um, uh, to acquire the voltage data using our, our data acquisition device. And afterwards, mm -hmm. yeah, when you get the data, this is the main work you usually do uh, when you do data analysis. Um, you explore and discover all the stuff and use the power of MATLAB um, to get the results and insight mm -hmm. in your data. You plot it, you visualize it usually, and then um, when you are ready and you think you're, you, um, you have done all the um, analysis, then you you usually want to share the data mm -hmm. uh, to some reports, mm -hmm. whatever, or do some output for, for design. Mm -hmm. Here in this case, we uh, we acquire the the battery data to get a little bit more, a better insight in the mm -hmm. uh, parameters we want to use for a, a simulation of a battery, which is mm -hmm. done in Simulink later on. And therefore, we uh, extract from our uh, test data the parameters which can be used later on for the simulation. Okay, and this analysis data or the data that we directly get from the battery seems to be quite noisy yep. and this is also a pure requirement. We have to have smooth and clean data to be able to set up a proper model. I guess this model is a Simulink model yes. of a battery um, and this can be interesting for you because some of you are having or are using an electric powertrain and modeling battery can be interesting for considerations of energy consumption. Um, yeah. You want to know how, how long you can drive with a battery. I think that might be quite interesting for you. And I would suggest just let's go to the topic. Yeah. Um, overview at that point, um, we will talk about, or ex in that session, it's not exactly us, it's a colleague who has yeah. done a pretty good webinar on that, on that point. Um, he is giving an overview about data analysis, um, uh, talking a bit uh, more about that workflow that Rainer has briefly introduced. He will actually show a battery test case and how to acquire data from that. And then um, he's going to develop a workflow which involves first importing and visualizing the data, then applying all the data analysis techniques like smoothing the data, removing noise, removing outliers, and in, in the context of that workflow, he also will touch the topic of report generation mm -hmm. and publishing of the code. And of course, automation of data analysis to save time in, in second and third approaches for data analysis. Um, here you have again the example, um, you will uh, deal with filtered data. Um, and in the next section, he will talk about missing data. It's something that can happen anytime. You have online awesome. data acquisition, the signal, you have some problems, mm. but on the other hand, the data is very important. We will show ways how to handle that issue, so to smooth it and to use curve fitting mm -hmm. in order to handle missing data. 
And finally, um, our colleague will talk about sharing workflows. This can mean several things. Either somebody of you is creating a MATLAB app, so let's say a GUI, where your colleagues can interact, mm -hmm. so to make it easy um, to further work on that, like for example the curve fitting toolbox. Yeah. I think, Rainer, you can briefly show that, because mm -hmm. that's an interesting feature, this MATLAB apps. Yeah. They can be quite helpful and are some of them are already uh, installed with MATLAB. Mm -hmm. um, and might be also interesting that you deploy components of your code so that colleagues who are not um, into MATLAB can use it even without MATLAB. Yeah. Exactly. And um, the better uh, this, the webinar we are talking about is a webinar. It's called Battery Data Acquisition and Analysis Using MATLAB. There are several ways to, to, go, the, uh, to go to that webinar. Um, probably the most easy one is just um, to go to our website. So go to mathworks.com. Um, then go to products and services and look for data acquisition toolbox. That's what we have here. Yep. And that's typical for all of our products. We have getting started materials as well as webinars. And if we go to the webinar section of the data acquisition toolbox, it should be there. Yes, exactly here. Battery data acquisition analysis using MATLAB. And the only requirement is that you log in with your MathWorks account and then you are able to, to have a look at that video. It's pretty condensed, but uh, has very good quality and uh, gives, a nice, gives a nice insight to, to data acquisition and data analysis. Of course, I will put that link to the mm -hmm. Racing Lounge section um, so that you directly have access to that to make it easier for you. And, of course, we are also interested in, in your feedback on that. So, you know our team email address. I will mention it at the end of today's session again. And we want to know if that's interesting for you, if we can answer any additional questions, um, if you are interested in particular topics that we should make an additional session mm -hmm. on. That's something we definitely can do for you. I think now, Rainer, it's time that we have a look at the approach if we have outliers and smoothing is not possible anymore. So probably you going to tell us what we can do in that special situation. So Rainer, the stage is yours. Thanks. So first of all, uh, um, Christoph mentioned the apps. So mm -hmm. uh, you find here uh, in the MATLAB toolstrip uh, home plots apps and apps is uh, the place where you can find uh, these uh, little UIs. Um, which helps you uh, to do some yeah, um, the graphical front end. You see that the curve fitting app, uh, and this depends on what kind of um, license you have on, on your computer. I think um, the Formula student teams have quite a, 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 yeah, curve a, lo is a lot of toolboxes included. inside yes. it, mm -hmm. and therefore you can just yeah, open it and, and use it and uh, you usually can also uh, create code, MATLAB code from the, from the apps. Um, in the webinar, uh, Rob shows uh, some examples how you can use this kind of uh, uh, app uh, for creating a, a curve fitting uh, mm -hmm. algorithm. Okay. Uh. Um, a question that I have to the apps, um, is it possible to create our own app and put it to that, that section here? Yeah. Uh, okay. You see it here. You have different ways to mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, to create your own uh, okay. apps. Uh, this is done by this uh, button. Then mm -hmm. you you get the workflow where you pick your ah, okay. uh, UI mm -hmm. and MATLAB automatically uh, seeks for it. I think you have, we have also a session about creating apps already. Yes, Jeremy has done that session, so you will already find it in the in the racing lounge. Yeah, exactly right. And in the end, you 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 press package. You mm -hmm. get a, a file which is called MATLAB install. Mm -hmm. You just double click it, and then you find it in their okay. apps. And you um, also can share it with your colleagues. Yeah, cool. Uh, mm -hmm. The other way, uh, the, these are apps which is uh, shipped with a with, with with MATLAB mm -hmm. in the toolboxes. But also, you can get more apps, and then you you uh, will write redirect it to MATLAB Central, mm -hmm. where you can. Uh, just yeah, 
Google what kind of apps you want to do and you see okay. it in different um, uh, application areas you find uh, different apps and then okay. just use it. Okay, so it might be that somebody already did the work you need for a certain problem. Cool. Yeah. Um, coming to our problem, so in the in the webinar you saw that we, that we acquired data, then we used the data, um, saved it in a, mm -hmm. in a file, uh, did some analysis, did a report, uh, detect some missing data mm -hmm. and yeah, did some yeah, uh, interpolation. Uh, we now use this um, the script, um, mm -hmm. which you see, it's, it's different sections, and uh, our problem now it's uh, to find outliers. Mm -hmm. This is a little bit harder, or yep. uh, as detecting missing values. Um, but we will show you a different approaches how you can do this kind okay. of yeah, um, workflow, and uh, that uh, you must. Uh, in the beginning, you you had to think about it uh, if your data is your. Yeah, uh, you can use these data for this kind of algorithm because uh, uh, sometimes you have uh, fast moving data which is very dynamic then maybe uh, uh, it's not uh, possible to uh, apply these algorithms. Mm -hmm. you, you can test it and uh, you, you should not do it with all the complete data sets. Yeah. I mean, you, you, as we see it now we, we, we just put a little section trial alg algorithm mm -hmm. and this is the end result. This is the uh, you see it, it's uh, divided in different sections, um, which also Rob explained mm -hmm. in the webinar, okay. which can be a very useful to do this. Um, and you see there are different approaches, or if you have a linear symposium, you can use a uh, Cook's distance uh, approach. Uh, we can use a, a smoothing spline. Uh, I guess this smoothing spline is also mentioned in the webinar. It's in yeah. the curve fitting toolbox. So I think the way for you to go is to start with an easy approach, curve fitting, smoothing spline. And if you see that these out outliers affect your data in a negative way, I think we should get back to yeah. the work here and think a bit more about well special approaches to, mm. to get them out. Mm. What we will show here today is it's, it's a kind of yeah, more advanced statistical approach. It's a, a bootstrapping algorithm mm -hmm. um, where we define some confident intervals and then if, okay. if the data is outside of these con confident intervals, okay. then you can assume that it's that they are outliers. Okay. And of course you can also use some yeah, um, normal distribution and, and look mm -hmm. if they are uh, inside or outside. Okay. Uh, yeah, I will use the section mode, so we, we will run through the different sections uh, okay. using these um, uh, buttons mm -hmm. here. First, we, we want to use this uh, data set. It's, it's stored in a math file. Mm -hmm. um, and as I mentioned before, we, we don't want to use uh, the complete data set. We, we just uh, index it and then use only 60 okay. seconds. First se 60 seconds. Okay. And then we, we create it. So I just uh, execute the section. Mm -hmm. When you see that we have here um, mm -hmm. uh, 1,143 40, data points. Okay. Data points. Um, this is now a clear signal. Usually you don't have clear signals mm -hmm. when you measure it directly or sen or sensor signals. So uh, usually you have a little bit noise on it. Um, the advantage with our data is we have a clear signal. Mm -hmm. Now we put the noise on it and then ah, we okay. can uh, see if our uh, algorithm works. works. So okay. Because we know uh, actually the, uh, the real data. Perhaps a brief comment uh, at that point, if you go up a bit, a section is always marked with two percentage signs. Yeah. And the good thing here, if you put, uh, if you click run in advance, each section is executed individually. Yeah. So it's also good, a good way how to um, have a proper format of your code. Yeah. Okay. And this is all the one of the things you use later on when you see this publish. Yes. And then exactly. you can use this publish, and and here you also see that you can create them. Mm -hmm. uh, sections inside. Yeah, we already had a section on publishing. Okay, so then everybody uh, should be on. I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. Hopefully. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah, we create this noise, mm -hmm. just a normal RAN function, then and we also create some outliers. Okay. So, uh, at, at the special positions. 500, 600, mm -hmm. 605. Um, and then we create our data set. And next uh, section would be we visualize it and uh, okay. put it on a, in a MATLAB figure. Mm -hmm. Uh, just do this, and then you see it. Uh, okay. We have mm -hmm. here these outliers. Let's. 
mm -hmm. you see the one here, mm -hmm. one here, and the other one is uh, right below here. Mm -hmm. Next thing would be uh, to create a, uh, a data set for this bootstrap algorithm. You have to do them, uh, create them residuals, and mm -hmm. therefore the first thing is we, we smooth again our mm -hmm. uh, our noisy signal using our uh, a fit object, which is part of their Mm -hmm. um, part of the curve fitting toolbox and we use a smoothing spline, okay. smoothing parameters and then uh, again we visualize it. Okay, let's do it and I guess then we will see that the result is affected somehow by the um, residuals. Yeah, and then we we just create the residuals. You see we got the original data that the predicted mm -hmm. data you see that we use here the, the spline data which we just created with the fit object, mm -hmm. uh, execute it, then you see the residuals again, the same value. And the next step would be to create from these residuals or uh, new data sets mm -hmm. for the bootstrap uh, algorithm. And we, we de decided to do 1,000 data sets. Okay. And you see each new data set is a sum of the original observations and a sample of their um, residual okay. vector. So it's not just handling with the already existing data, it's creating a new data set yeah. following certain rules. Okay. And you more, uh, you more you have with the uh, more accurate the, okay. uh, mm -hmm. uh, the result can be. And what we do here, uh, you see this are uh, kind of bootstrap algorithm, a good way always um, when you don't Maybe you get a uh, code from your uh, colleagues, then mm -hmm. you, you don't know it. Just go to the MATLAB help. Okay. Either uh, hitting F1 or... Yeah. Yes. Just uh, open it, then you get this short help uh, with all the relevant mm -hmm. um, information, or you go to the... Uh, documentation. Documentation okay. itself, and mm -hmm. you see it's always uh, the same. Yep. Um, um, uh, okay. Yeah, here we have the short description, mm -hmm. the syntax, and what's always interesting. Always some examples. Always some examples. What's mm -hmm. interesting here, you can define them options for this kind mm -hmm. of uh, algorithm, and uh, you see here you can use uh, the advantage of uh, parallel computing. Okay. So Mat MATLAB also offers their, uh, their parallel computing mm -hmm. capabilities, um, where you can define. Uh, how many workers of your system uh, okay. are used for creating these uh, results. And there are a lot of built-in functionality in the toolboxes, mm -hmm. like this bootstrap algorithm, and then you can use the power of your okay. laptop. I think that can be interesting for you guys. Um, if you have certain scripts running very long, um, just have a look at the documentation and check whether the parallel option is available. Yeah. and. Uh, we see it here, um, it can really speed up our our calculation times. Mm -hmm. And I think mm -hmm. parallel computing toolbox is also included in it's there. It's included, uh, same as the statistics toolbox. Yeah. Okay. And um, the good thing is if you maybe have also access to a cluster, then mm -hmm. it's no, no big deal to uh, yeah. send the data. You have here this uh, parallel in the home button. Uh, now we have only local defined, but you can define your, your cluster uh, configuration and then the data would be uh, um, calculated on there, or the, uh, the algorithm would be sent to the cluster and, and, okay. and therefore um, used. Um, so what is required, you once um, set the configuration of your cluster yeah. and whenever you use that, it will be mm. automatically sent to the cluster and yeah. calculated there. You okay. see it? Mm -hmm. We set the options, use parallel always, mm -hmm. and the options are again in the, in the kind of um, yeah, bootstrap algorithm. Mm -hmm. And uh, we just execute it now. Yep. Let's see what, what happens. And in the beginning, you see a parallel pool is, is opened. Mm -hmm. You see it also on, on the left side, uh, left down here, mm -hmm. that the parallel pool is started. started. Mm -hmm. And usually, if you do this calculation without parallel computing, then it would be a, uh, approximately about 100 seconds. Okay. And using these, um, if it's connected to two workers, mm -hmm. it's only, uh, let's see, I guess it was about uh, um, 30 seconds, something okay. like that. Mm -hmm. And this is, of course, uh, quite a, 
uh, yeah, it's quick improvement. Three. Quick improvement, yeah. Uh, without, uh, you see, it forty-one. Was it really forty-one seconds? Was it so long that we talked about <laughs> 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 to bridge the gap? Yeah. Okay. Uh, but but if you have their access to the tools, use it and mm -hmm. and you no, see it. sure. it's 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 you just that only that the kind of uh, yep. option and then it, you don't have to do anything. There's also some kind of you know, other functionality like par for. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you're interested in, in parallel computing, maybe we can also set up a... Uh, yeah, would be interesting. Let us know if you're interested in parallel computing, and then we could set up a session on that. Yeah. You see here, we, we created uh, the boot results for the, uh, uh, the results from the bootstrap algorithm. We created 1,000, as I mentioned. And then we use now these 1,000 um, different data sets uh, for our detection of outliers. First, we uh, make a mean on it and then we, we define our confidence um, mm -hmm. bound um, upper and a lower confidence bound mm -hmm. and of course we also visualize it in the next section okay and you see it here okay I think we have to zoom a bit okay yeah. and if it's signi significantly outside of the confidence bound then you can um, determine that these kind of uh, data points are mm -hmm. outliers and as you see it here um, um, yeah they are out that would be uh, an outlier mm -hmm. okay and yeah I, I think I have a question at that point how did you specify this confidence interval do you need some a priori knowledge for that or is it just a standard procedure that that one could follow here. Yeah, you usually you use this kind of uh, three sigma. Or ah, okay. Um, standard deviation. Approach. Standard deviation. Yeah, again. Okay. Exactly. Can and we have a look at that in the in the code, just to follow that again? So we we defini uh, mm -hmm. de did hear the definition, and you see the bound was your uh, tolerance. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Multiplied with their yep. standard deviation. Okay. Uh, of course, well, what I mentioned is also look at their uh, normal plot uh, mm -hmm. and uh, get them inside of that, and you see it here. Okay. Uh, you see it. Yeah, most of the data is uh, around the normal uh, mm -hmm. distribution, normal and you see here three, three of the outliers, and then ah, okay. you can decide that these kind of uh, um, data points uh, should be outliers. Okay. Okay. And yeah, as I mentioned, there's this kind of uh, uh, rule mm -hmm. uh, where you define that most when you when the data point is more than three po uh, twenty five sigma, then you um, this could be an outlier. We define this kind of outliers mm -hmm. and visualize again it uh, okay. using a, a scatter block. You see it again. We, we use the tolerance, um, which we defined. Uh, a uh, few sections before mm -hmm. and just visualize it and you see it in this scatter block again. Okay. Uh, there are some points lying directly on the on okay. the line so that could be Almost or not. Almost an outlier. Okay. But definitely these three, three again mm -hmm. uh, which we defined earlier uh, this should be outliers and then you can use uh, a MATLAB notation uh, which automatically uh, okay. uh, uh, rep uh, replace with these kind of your data set, which okay. can be found here in this yeah. kind of. Uh, Let's have a uh, look to see the command how to or replace them or how to get them out. Yeah, they have here the out outliers uh, uh, mm -hmm. timestamp, uh, and then you just uh, clear it and use a fit function on it. Uh, okay. And then when we execute it, you, we see there. Uh, uh, okay. The original data, again with the, uh, uh, there should be the outliers. Mm -hmm. We remove them, and then you see okay. it. Uh, uh, you can. Can we zoom a bit more? What what is happening? How the fit looks like? You see. Okay. We, yeah, we yeah. Just there. Of mm -hmm. course, there's a little bit of uh, okay. uh, moving downwards. Okay. But and it's inside the noise, so okay. Everything. And now it would be straightforward to use a smooth, smooth spline, for example. Yeah. And then the outliers won't have a negative effect. 
that's good. yeah. Can that's we have good. a look at the fit function? So just to to get this um, command, how we really can remove the outliers. The, the fit function uh, was defined earlier, so we, okay. we, we used this kind of uh, mm -hmm. uh, who's explained again here. Ah, okay, okay. And this is actually the function that removes the outlier after they are detected. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You move the one. Okay. Basically, it's the bootstrap algorithm is able to detect the outliers. Yeah. And then we use the same functionality to remove them. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. And of course, you you can use our uh, in the end when you want to have a published version, mm -hmm. just go to publish and write the yeah, publish exactly. button. It's something we already know. You can create HTML, PDF. Uh, even LaTeX reports, yeah. um, where you can publish um, your your algorithms. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, I think this this window should be well known to you. And if it's not, we have a session of the Racing Lounge focusing targeting the topic of publishing of your code. We also published the the, the scripts for that on File Exchange, so you will find all links on the Racing Lounge section. Yeah. Publishing. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So, Rainer, I think we are pretty much at the end. So, yep. we've learned a lot how to, to remove outliers if they are really affecting the result quality. Um, now, I think it's time to get back to our presentation. Um, and I think that's something you can mention. Uh, what are the key takeaways for, for today's section? So, so you, s you saw that we, we used the uh, MATLAB for the data analysis, mm -hmm. but uh, um, of course, one of them, at least for me, uh, mm -hmm. the most, um, uh, the best thing is that you can use one environment okay. for for data acquisition, for data analysis, for the report generation. You don't have to move yeah. uh, to another tool mm -hmm. uh, and lose time yep. or make errors uh, when yeah. you uh, transfer the data. That's every time the, the big advantage using MATLAB. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Second point is uh, which you have to keep in mind that you um, def depends on your uh, problem, um, uh, which kind of statistical approach you use for finding missing data or outliers, and it, de okay. it depends on your data set if it's fast moving or yeah. slow changing. Um, but this you can get uh, easily find out yeah. testing it, and, the, and you saw it. It's very easy to test it on a small set of data, and then you yeah. can. Uh, move it to the whole exactly. data that. So I think the core message here is even if you don't get a good result with the standard approaches, there are a lot of toolboxes around which could be of, of great help. Uh, we have shown you an example of the statistics toolbox, yep. but there are other approaches available. Okay, and finally, I think. Yeah, and, and, and you saw that we just uh, used the parallel computing mm -hmm. capabilities um, um, of MATLAB. This is always when you have some, some really uh, number crunching stuff. Yeah. When uh, just go uh, and, 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 and look if you can yeah. do some of this par exactly. parallel computing capabilities and then you get the uh, results. Okay. Well, by just clicking on that local pool, um, we speeded it up by a factor of almost 3 or 2.5. Yeah. Good. So, thanks for watching. Um, finally, I have some remarks for you. So, um, we invite you to visit the Racing Lounge. Um, by now we have plenty of sessions covering different topics that are interesting for you, like CAD import, publishing and several other topics. Um, in today's session we have um, invited you to have a look at a webinar, so we are really interested how, how you like that, if, if jumping to another source is interesting, was it helpful for you? So we really appreciate if you send your feedback to our team email address, it's formulastudent at mathworks.com. And additionally, I want to um, give an info about our complimentary software offer. So if you're a Formula Student team, um, you have access to our complimentary Formula Student license. Just follow the link here. It's also on the MathWorks Formula Student Germany webpage. Mm -hmm. And if you use our software, we would appreciate if you use our logo to represent our role as sponsor on your reports, on your presentations and on your work documentation. So thanks for watching again. Thank you, Rainer, for that You're interesting welcome. presentation about statistical approaches. And we hope to see you next time in the Racing Lounge. 
And by the way, the event in Hockenheim is close, so we will be there. Um, we wish you all the best and good luck in the last days of testing, I guess. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.